This instructional companion on pulleys falls under the major topic statics, which contains the following two chapters, determinate statics and indeterminate statics. Determinant statics is, is about uh, the topics in which uh, you can get answers from the three equations of equilibrium alone. Uh, the other chapter, indeterminate statics, means you've got to find some additional equations from typically solid mechanics. So here, here is where we're going to find the, the section pulleys. What is not presented in the MERM is a discussion on how do you come up with the relationship between the tension on both sides of a pulley. What you see here is a uh, pulley that's been isolated from the rest of a system. I've tried to make it generic in the sense that uh, I've got the angle alpha and the angle beta some particular angle. That way you don't feel like the, uh, the result that we come up with is something special. Many times uh, people in textbooks uh, show those at uh, very nice angles, horizontal and vertical, and, and then when it's at an angle you sort of wonder, uh, well, what does this mean here? But uh, it, it uh, is general, and we typically neglect uh, the weight of the pulley. It's usually small compared to the other forces that we, uh, we have in the problem. Well, in order to, to analyze this and to come up with our answer using our foundational things in, in uh, 2D equilibrium, the first thing, of course, is to draw a free body diagram. So let's do that. Okay, first I've got a, um, of course, the pulley. And I put a hole instead of a solid dot because we've now pulled the pin out. Uh, it's supported by a frictionless pulley. pulley. Uh, typically, that's what you have in most of these problems. And since we've, uh, it's really a, an axle, it's like a pin. So what we're going to have there is uh, two pin forces. And I'm going to label those A sub Y and A sub X. And that draws out, well, what coordinate system we're going to use. And I use ver various ones in the course. But uh, the one you're probably most familiar with is the XY and counterclockwise system, which I'm going to put down here. Okay, So X to the right, Y up, and counterclockwise as, um, as a positive moment. And then I'm going to show, and I'm going to exaggerate its thickness here. I'm going to show the uh, piece of the belt. We've cut it off right at its tangent points. Okay, like this, so I'm making this a little bit bigger. And coming out the end of this is a tension, uh, which I'm going to label T1. And again, we've got our uh, reference line here for the alpha angle. And then for our uh, other tension over here, I'm going to call that uh, T2. So again, that's the beta angle. Again, trying to make sure that we don't um, um, make it look special. And then if we draw a line out, uh, there'll be a perpendicular. That'd be perpendicular. It may not look quite perpendicular, but it's supposed to be. Uh, and that's perpendicular as well. This has a distance r, and this has a distance r. So kind of a lot of things on that particular free body diagram. Uh, the third thing is not used here, but uh, it's something that uh, we'll talk about in, in belt friction. But this angle here, the angle that um, goes from one tangent point to the other, is referred to as the angle of wrap. Okay. Now, um, the three equations of, of equilibrium are the sum of the forces, set all the forces in x equal to 0. Uh, and that's going to have an equation in ax and uh, t1 and t2. And sum of the forces in y equals 0 going to have a y, and again, components of t1 and t2. So essentially, you've got uh, two equations in, in four unknowns. Um, the third one uh, will give you um, what we're looking for. So we're just going to hold those. Typically, in, in problems, uh, if you're looking for ax and ay, you're going to have to go find the tension first, and you're going to see why that is. So now, if we take the third equation of equilibrium, sum of the forces about any point, and I'm going to pick uh, a because uh, a is where the axle forces ax and ay go through. Okay, and I'm going to set that equal to zero. And if I put my finger there, then uh, what I've got is uh, t1 uh, is producing a positive moment times uh, r, and t2 is producing a negative uh, moment about a times r. So what you end up with is the simple equation t1 uh, r minus t2 r equals zero. Okay, quite simply. And uh, what happens, because the radius is the same, those two cancel, and you get T1 
equals T2, which we can just call a single T. And that profound uh, result is that while we don't get the answer for T out of this, we've got to find it from some other place, it means that the tension in a cable cannot change as it goes around a pulley. Single cable cannot change. If the tension on one side matches the tension on the other. So we could get rid of the T1 and the T2. Okay? So that's the major principle that I want you to uh, come away with at this point. Now, in the MERM, there is a table, uh, of course, for the 12th edition. I think this is in chapter uh, 43. But there's a table called the uh, Mechanical Advantages of Rope-Operated Machines. <laughs> That's a nice name. I like that. Um, and it talks about uh, things like the, the number of shivs. It talks about the number of ropes coming to and from the load-carrying uh, pulley in terms of determining the mechanical advantage. Well, uh, that might be, but uh, you've only got in that particular table uh, two real simple ones, sort of a complicated one in the middle and a really hard one on the right. So what do you do if you don't have that? Uh, he also has a discussion here about loss factor and pulley efficiency. Uh, that might be on the exam, but um, that, that's not really uh, me even medium hanging fruit. So to me, uh, that, that's kind of uh, lost here. Let's, but let's use what we've just learned about T1 equal T2 uh, equals T. Uh, on that uh, pulley system that's in the middle there of the... Um, Okay, I've kind of drawn that uh, partially for you. There's a, a big pulley. Uh, this is a link here with a, an axle and another axle. And then you got your lower piece, again, with an axle and axle and your weight. And so there actually is just one cable. So let's draw that. Uh, some people get um, um, concerned about the angle of these ropes, but it really doesn't. Because when you think about the cosine of an angle uh, that's close to zero, it's uh, almost one. So we really don't have to worry about that. Just uh, leave that alone. So this cable goes around the top one, comes around here, uh, goes um, back up to this one around the pulley, uh, down to this one, and around the pulley, and then back to the center of that pulley. So we've kind of gone all the way around a uh, single, uh, single uh, cable. So if we call the, the, the tension in that cable, F is you holding on to this, this pulley system. So essentially the tension is that value uh, F. Sometimes you label it P. And the way I tell people to approach these is start with the weight and move up until you can cut through all the cables and isolate the weight in the bottom. And so when you do that, sometimes you have more than one choice, um, or at least you come to there's multiple choices. Here there's really only one, and you go right through there. Okay, and so the next thing to do is really to draw a, um, a free body diagram here, and uh, let me do that quickly here uh, without using up my YouTube time. Okay, so I've just kind of drawn that lower piece, and we can now draw uh, each one of them in here. And so what we have is uh, this one comes where we've cut it. We come up here, and that goes to there. Uh, this one comes up here and is got cut off there. This one went slight angle and got cut off there. And then this last one came up and got cut off there. So what we need is what is the value of each one of these tensions coming out of the um, cable. Well, we just follow, follow the cable over here. If this is F, then this came around over here. And so that's F. We come all the way around over here. And then that's F. Come around over here. And that's F. Back around over here. And so that's F. So essentially, following along, sometimes you don't have that happen, but in this particular one, it looks hard, but it really is only one cable. So what we have up here is F, 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 and F. Okay. Okay. So if we apply equilibrium, it's fairly easy. I just kind of use the, the symbols, and we've only got one direction, uh, positive up. What we end up with is we've got four Fs up. We've got W down. Set that equal to zero. Solve for F, and you end up with W over 4, which is what he has. So we're OK there, because N for him was the number of, of shivs, which was 4. So he got W over 4. And in fact, what we call 4 to 1, I'm sorry, uh, 4 to uh, 1 uh, is the mechanical advantage. Okay. Uh, in other words, if, if the block weighs 100 pounds, then the person only has to pull with 25 pounds. Okay? So that's kind of what uh, that is about. 
So you see you can use the, the standard, I call it the standard pulley solution where T1 equals T2 equals T. You found it by first principles of 2D equilibrium. So uh, you can solve any pulley problem using that. Uh, you don't need a, a fancy table that you see in the MERM. Again, I invite you to visit my website, www.drtomsclassroom.com. Uh, 